Hello. Hi. Woof. <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to the SASOP Show. We are back for a new year of IT fun times. My name is Justine, and I'm the director of SASOPs and corporate IT at Better Cloud. This is my fearless cohort, Brian. Hello. I'm Brian, and I am the senior IT manager at Better Cloud. Look at you, Mr. Fancy Promotion. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for giving me that promotion. If You're welcome. Those who don't know, Justine's my boss. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited for a new year of the SASOP show here at the SASOPticon, which is a fictional arena where we all get together and practice some SASOPs. Or Just something. like less blood and death and stuff. For today's episode, we wanted to share with you all a project near and dear to our hearts, automating employee onboarding. You see, we have lots and lots and lots of SaaS apps that our company uses with various configurations uh, in each, each are based on department or role. Yeah, Whew. what a pain. Uh, and of course, we don't want to have multiple tabs open, no! multiple admin consoles, no! trying to do things across various platforms. Just takes forever. And because we're human, we're bound to forget something. So good thing we have an amazing SaaS management platform called Better Cloud. When we started this project, we had a handful of onboarding specific workflows, but they were nowhere near comprehensive. So the team put together a document tracking each and every click that we went through to onboard a basic user account. We ended up finding out that onboarding just one user was taking 36 clicks. 36 clicks? I can't click that many times. I already have carpal tunnel. We, um, we had some workflows that were already doing a bit of legwork. Uh, but we also think that that number may be underestimated too, because it doesn't necessarily capture all the email groups people needed to be added to after their first day, nor any onboarding work that teams were doing internally to add their new hires to Slack channels. I mean, a lot of that stuff people would just take care of on their own. So there were a lot of potential improvements here for us to tackle. Once we had that baseline, the team met with every single department in the company to begin gathering requirements for what each of their new hires might need. Once we had these conversations, we were updating our source of truth onboarding worksheet for historical reference that our team could start working off of. Yeah, we also mapped out which systems were being performed, which systems were performing which actions. So for instance, the identity provider that we use versus Better Cloud to ensure that we're being consistent with our changes moving forward and that we're using information from the right sources. Um, since our source of truth for user profiles comes from our identity provider, we tried to make sure that the majority of our workflow triggers came from our identity provider versus one of the more downstream apps like Google. Um, if you don't have an identity provider, uh, Google may be your trigger for that. Oh, or Office 365 or whoever you use. Once we had this documentation in place, we started updating or creating workflows based on those requirements. Uh, and we're gonna show you a few of those workflows right now. So we have a workflow here. You can see this is a workflow. Um, what we really, when, when somebody starts, um, what used to happen is that we just have one workflow that would run and they'd get access to a few groups or Slack channels or whatever. And then as we kind of grew up a little bit more and more, what we realized was that for each person in each organization, in each department, in each team, they all needed a slightly different level of access. And so what we wanted to do was give them kind of different layers. And so we start to layer on their access for their team and their department um, and the whole org in general as a sort of identity onion. Um, now, uh, we're using Okta groups in this case, Okta's identity provider, uh, because we kind of wanted to separate out what, um, you know, groups that controlled access to things, access groups, and groups that were used for email distribution and stuff like that. So like a Google group. Um, so in this case, we've got a full-time employees onboarding workflow. Um, this one applies to everybody. So it's kind of the I don't know, outer layer of the onion or the inner layer of the onion. I'm not really sure where my metaphor is going, but um, <laughs> we've, we start and say, if, any, if, if this is a full-time employee, then they get access to the things that all full-time employees get. 
Um, and so in this case, we add them to a bunch of company-wide stuff. If then so we I, go... Uh, Brian, oh, yeah. I noticed that you have a, a wait for one hour, a wait for duration step here. Um, can you explain why we are waiting for an hour before we do any of these other steps? Yeah, um, well, I added that wait for duration uh, step so that it wouldn't happen too quickly so that it would seem like I was still doing things myself and I wasn't just taking a break. No. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, that wait for duration step is uh, to avoid something called a race condition. So a race condition is when basically you run two sets of actions or you run a bunch of actions and one of those, one or more of those actions depends on one first step being completed. And if that first step isn't completed, uh, then those subsequent actions will fail. The race condition happens when those actions try to run before that first step. And so what we need to happen is we need all of the data about a new user to be ingested into Better Club first before we can take action on a bunch of uh, different downstream apps like Google. So if we create an Okta user and that creates a Google user at exactly the same time, it may be only a matter of seconds, but let's say that that um, Okta user is in there and tries to run all these steps before the Google user actually gets created, those steps are gonna fail. So we add this one hour duration to make sure that all the accounts that are downstream that Okta's provisioning or your identity provider's provisioning exist before we try to take action in them. And then if we go to the next one, um, okay, so this person uh, who was hired, they're based in New York. Well, they need stuff that's specific to the New York office. Um, they, we have a, we have a distribution group for them. We have Slack channels to talk about um, their favorite place to get uh, um, takeout sushi, for instance. And then we get kind of smaller in the onion uh, down to the actual department that this person works for. And in this case, we'll say it's professional services. And so when they make the, meet the triggers to, to qualify for professional services, um, we execute a bunch more steps um, all sorts of fun things like creating Salesforce users, adding them to our um, LMS system, adding to Atlassian groups, sending messages, giving them access to our product, all that fun stuff. And then finally, we get down to the core of it, which is this person's uh, on the customer training and enablement team. Uh, if you're not familiar with the CTE team, they're the people who are responsible for the official Better Cloud certified admin, which my, me, myself, Justine and our whole team just recently got. So we are now certified to use our own product, which is good because I've been doing it for about eight years. So I guess it was a little- time, better. Brian. You know. <laughs> um, so that team is great. You should say hi to them. Uh, if somebody joins their team, um, we now run another set of another set of steps. Um, and now the criteria for what, the criteria for these workflows triggering is dependent on a few things. So in the case of the earlier workflows, we our criteria is dependent on them being added to groups. And in the case of these groups, uh, that happens automatically. Our identity provider adds them to the groups when they meet certain criteria, like their department equals blank, their title equals blank. When we get down to the nitty gritty, um, it can get a little bit trickier. Um, and the reason is, you, I, I didn't realize this, but when, I, when we started putting this into play, there are a lot of people who work on teams like the finance team or the customer training and enablement team that don't actually have any sort of signifiers in our HRIS system. Like the finance team, their department is general and admin. That's pretty common in a lot of companies. Um, the customer training and enablement team the most granular we get in our HRIS is that they're professional services and they all report into the same person. So in order to make those trigger, this workflow trigger, we actually base it on title. And so um, one of the more recent adds to Better Cloud is the ability to do or conditions. So we can say um, when a user is creating Google and their title is this or this. And so as their team starts to grow and expand, we'll add more titles as they become real. And then once their team gets big enough, 
uh, they will likely, you know, maybe they'll be of their own department um, and we can change the triggers to something like that. Cool. Yeah, and uh, I know that you sat with the team and went through all of these new onboarding workflows and, and checked them for consistency, making sure that we were using similar triggers for each one. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, when we when you start to have as many workflows as we do, um, we have upwards of you know, like 92 workflows that run, uh, you wanna make sure that they're all playing by the same rules. So we tried to make sure that uh, one of the things we looked at in, in the workflows was to make sure that the triggers we were using, the win conditions were consistent. So uh, at an org level, um, we get a lot of those conditions actually from Google itself. Um, so we change based on org unit. Um, when you step down, uh, we get a lot of those triggers from Okta groups. And then when you step down further than that, we, we base it on title. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that the actions that were actually being taken uh, aren't duplicative or redundant. We are constantly yeah. iterating on our onboarding process. We look forward to making this even more betterer and more automated. -er. So stay tuned. Uh, and we hope that some of what we shared with you today will be helpful for you and your organization. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as we often want to make sure that we do, as we do, as we do, we like to bark. We like to bark because a do <laughs> why wouldn't you have a dog wait until you're taught to bark in a video? Hold on. One moment, please. <laughs> He's available for adoption. Please, someone take him. Just kidding. Uh, as, we, as we like to do, um, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the SAS Ops community, which you should join uh, to participate in fun discussions like these. Um, and maybe we'll start a dog adoption channel on there. Uh, you can join us at sasops.community. We'll we'll see you there. <laughs> Thank we'll see you. See you there. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.